What's up guys? Just got through cutting out some 16 gauge metal arc that you see and it is in progress right now of being painted. Alright, seven coats of candy later. It's time to reveal it and see if we did this right. We shouldn't have any, we should have some nice crisp border lines here with the rest of the flag. So we got this job here sent by my but by my buddy in New York, Zanel. Um, and believe it or not, he wants all these parts cut out of three different materials. So this right here gets cut out of 16 gauge cold roll. This exhaust flange gets cut out of 063 aluminum, and then the rest out of 090 aluminum. So uh, we are going to go ahead and disable this right here. And we're going to focus on cutting this. These uh, little lines right here are going to be bend lines. So all we're going to do is engrave those. So while I still have this sheet up, 16 gauge, we're going to go ahead and get the 16 gauge parts out of this. And then we'll get rid of it and get the aluminum up there. All right, we're going to cut this with nitrogen 16 gauge. I was just going to check the, uh, the nozzle. We had a 1.5 double nozzle in there before. And uh, every laser cutter guy out there is going to say, "Oh, you can't use it. You can't use a double nozzle with nitrogen." But for some re weird reason, I actually get better results with double nozzle with nitrogen, even though you're just supposed to normally use a single. So let's see if we can find a spot. Maybe right here we can cut this little design out of. We got to do two of these. Maybe something like that. Let's frame it out and see if it'll cut it there. All right, that's the first set. Take this around. Looks like it's going to cut it there, no problem. Let me lean you forward. All right, there's our cuts. You can see the little engraved bend lines there. And there's the backside. And this is just 16 gauge cold roll, a little tab, backside, the edge. Pretty nice. All right, so here just uh, getting that carcass, uh, the off cut sheet, off of there, the 16 gauge, and then uh, gonna throw some 063 5052 aluminum up there, up there for the next part of the job. All right, we got the 063 on there and there's our slick looking exhaust flange. Let's get it cut. All right, so I got the 063 removed, and this is a drop of 090 5052, and it's a really tight fit trying to fit this uh, radiator shroud into the drop. So I'm tweaking around, trying to get it placed on there where it just just is able to fit right, and uh, double checking everything before I start cutting it. Looks like I'm just for playing with the remote, doesn't it? Just running it, running it, running it. And we're all set up, ready to cut. So let's do it.
See those extra little uh, dots in there? It's a little issue in the cab where some of the arcs and lines didn't get joined properly. I thought I caught them all, but I guess not. But there she is, the Malapu. All right, the 90,000 aluminum is, is kind of approaching the max of my machine. And I'm gonna show you, there's a, probably be able to see it there, a little bit of a, a faint burr, and it's really soft. You can kind of just pick it off with your fingers if you want to. But uh, a lot of people ask me about this. This is a Noga deburr to, tool. Uh, all the machinist type guys know what that is. Uh, but you can go on uh, Amazon and type in Noga deburr tool and see this one and several others that they got out there some really nicer ones actually and pick yourself up one of these but i'm just gonna deburr the edge of this it's really pretty straightforward to use curls up a nice little aluminum deburr chip there all right, you can see I put a, uh, some tape on the what will be the front side to uh, give it some protection here. So um, I really wish I had my new CNC press brake, but it's not here yet. So we're using this old dog, but it worked. This machine works good. A lot of people ask me about it, you know, and I've had it for, I don't know, several years now. And I have videos on it when I actually bought it. I think I bought it in 2014, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and I'm actually going to sell it when I get the new press brake. I'm going to sell this this one for probably about 1,500. I think they're about 2,200 dollars new, right? Or you know, somewhere around that. And then you got to pay shipping on it as well. Of course, you'll have shipping for me as me also, unless you live in Texas. All right, guys, here are the parts all finished up, the radiator shroud and some other brackets and the exhaust flange. And tell me why a car like this needs an exhaust flange like that. Hmm. All right, here is the next cutting job. This one's sent in to one of my local friends and I guess customer named Kyle. And you can see the border he put around that for the uh, material that we're cutting it out of. And what I'm demonstrating here is the auto nesting software. He manually placed what he sent me and then running it through the auto nesting algorithm allowed me to actually get one more knife blank in his uh, drop of 1095 high carbon steel. All right, after we did our nesting, I went in and just added some filler blocks thinking that he may want those dropouts because of this precious, expensive $80 piece of 1095. So we got it all set. And I am going to uh, cut these, uh, these fillers out first and just double check. I've never cut any 1095. It's 3 16 thick. So I should be able to use just regular carbon steel settings for that. But we're going to double check it and then go from there. All right. So I've disabled all of these and left that one to cut. So let's cut it and see what happens. All right, I could tell there was a little cutting gas issue there, so I paused it, fixed that, and now we're going to start it again. A lot of sparks. Something didn't look right with that. Looks like it cut okay. We'll have to pull it out of there once it cools off and then we'll come back and cut the rest of them. All right, there it is right off of the 
machine and you can see we've got kind of a fuzzy like burr on it there just kind of flakes off so I think we're good to go all right seemed like it was just running a little bit too fast for for what it I thought it should be doing but I just double checked it and it's good to go so we'll I paused it we'll keep going here You can see we're using up a lot of the real estate, although not really that aggressive. I think I left a 1.25 inch border. I'm gonna fill the plate. I'm gonna pause it and get that out of there. If we don't, it'll get all. All right, just wrapping it up here on the knives and thought I'd just look at, look at the uh, cut quality on some of these. Um, you know, you can see pretty, that's the front side and this is the back side. For some reason in, uh, make sure I'm, I got you in camera here. Yep. For some reason, um, you know, most of the time when you cut with oxygen, you can get a little uh, fine burr. Let me try to get this where you can see it. It's just right on the edge right there and you can just kind of flick it off with your finger. So um, that happens fairly often with uh, cut, cutting with oxygen. So let's just clean this up a little bit, see what we get. It had a little bit of oil on it from, uh, you know, when I got it in. And then uh, of course the laser puts some oxidation, sort of this black looking look on there. But, uh, now you can see that little burr better. You can see it's just kind of flaking off of there. So if you just knock it, knock it a few times, it'll come off. But you can see the holes there. Those are, uh, I believe they're 100 and, I'm not sure what they are. I just grabbed a drill bit. And uh, you can see that they, uh, this is the close, closest size that fits it. And um, it's got a pretty, let's get it down to the round part. You can see it's got a pretty nice fit there and you get that same fit through the back. So there's no taper, you know, like with a plasma table, if you got a hole that fits that close on the top side, by the time you get to the back, it will never come through because there's always a taper on it. But i um, pretty happy with that. So get these out to Kyle and see what he can do with them. And if you want one of these, just again, reach out to Kyle and uh, email him and see if you can get one from him you'll be supporting him and you'll be supporting me because uh there's a high chance if you get one from him it'll be a laser cut blank uh, from one that i sent him
All right, guys, that wraps up this video. Um, just some cutting jobs that I bring you along on these so you can see what was going on around here. You can see back there in the back, I've got some individual cylinders that I actually own the cylinders. So I keep them filled up with oxygen and, and nitrogen because my workload varies a lot. Uh, sometimes I get big jobs in, cutting a whole bunch of parts and running this laser for, you know, seven, eight hours a day, every day. And then sometimes I go days uh, at a time without cutting anything because I'm busy over here, you know, fabricating or in the paint booth painting, you know, that kind of thing. And those doers that you see me loading up here with the forklift, uh, they have a shelf life, especially in the summertime, they leak down every day. So if you're not using them, uh, you're just wasting material. Even though the price per cubic feet is a lot cheaper about half or a third the cost of what you know the compressed gases are the uh if you're not using it it's a big waste so i use a combination of both and just use what i need you know for little jobs like the knives and you know these metal art sheet and whatever uh, i just use the individual cylinders and for the big jobs i will call up and get the doers delivered and uh, sometimes I go get them, sometimes I have them delivered. You know, if I get a hot request and I don't have one here, I just go get it. And if I got some lead time, I will have them bring it out. So, all right guys, hope you enjoyed the video. See you on the next one.